Hi, I'm Sean Rice from the international tour of The Adams Family, and this is Living Out of Suitcases. We're all really excited to get back to work after having some really fun time off for the holidays to spend with our families. Hopefully you had a wonderful holiday as well, whatever you were celebrating. And even though we just started back, we were very lucky to already have a golden day. And I was very lucky that our golden day happened to be in my hometown of Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is comprised of three major cities, Tampa, Clearwater, and St. Petersburg, and happens to be where I grew up. If you end up in the Tampa Bay area, there are a lot of fun things to do. I always recommend that people check out historic Ybor City, located just outside of downtown Tampa. Ybor City was founded in the 1880s by local cigar manufacturers, an industry that's still booming there today. Subsequently, there's a huge Cuban and Spanish influence on the area. Today it's a cultural center supporting many small theaters and galleries as well as housing an entertainment district filled with shops and restaurants of every kind and a great number of bars and nightclubs for those looking for a little bit of Bourbon Street fun here in Florida. One of the most well-known restaurants in the city is also found here, the Columbia Restaurant, which was named one of the top 50 All-American icons by Nation's Restaurant News. Here you can dine amidst flamingo dancers and eat the best of Spanish cuisine, from salads prepared right at your table to their signature sandwich, the Cuban, which was first developed right here as a cheap meal for the cigar factory workers. The Cuban at the Columbia restaurant is delicious and served on Cuban bread made from just down the street in a local bakery. It's a must-go see in the area. Now, surprisingly enough, there's also a huge pirate influence in the area, all centered around the notorious Spanish pirate Jose Gaspar. Each year around February, Tampa Bay holds its Gasparilla Festival and Pirate Invasion. It's a fun time that includes parades and activities for people of all ages. If you're in town during it, it's something not to be missed. Now, Ybor is just a streetcar ride away from downtown Tampa where you'll find a nice mix of businesses, parks, museums, restaurants, and of course the Riverside, where you can see the iconic H.B. Plant Hotel, which now houses the University of Tampa on the skyline. Of course, a popular favorite tourist attraction in the Bay Area is Bush Gardens, filled with tons of roller coasters, carnival rides, and animal attractions all centered around Africa, the Dark Continent. Just over the bridge in St. Petersburg, you can spend the day or night shopping and dining at the St. Pete Pier, which offers beautiful views of the bay and nightly laser shows that shouldn't be missed. If sea life is your thing, make sure to check out either the Tampa Aquarium or head over to Clearwater and visit the home of winter from a dolphin's tail at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. To round it all off, there's several beaches including Clearwater Beach, St. Pete Beach, and beautiful Indian Rocks Beach that will leave you not only tanned, but toting souvenir sand dollars back home with you. When you travel a lot, you're bound to see a lot of airports. Now, airports can be the worst if you don't know what you're doing. There are really long lines that don't seem to go anywhere, lots of rules and regulations, TSA agents who seem like bullies if you don't know the tips and tricks to make your day less stressful and less time consuming. You don't want to be stuck in the airport getting caught up in a lot of red tape and miss your flight. After about the 10th or 20th time through the lines, you kind of pick up some tips and tricks to know how to make it go a little smoother. So this week I offer you some tips on making your next trip to the airport a hassle-free one. First thing, checking in. I recommend doing this online. Most of the airports will let you log on to their website and check on online. You can even do it on your phone if you want. Uh, and you can do it up to about 24 hours in advance depending upon the air, airline themselves. You can even pay for your checked luggage online, which is a great time saver. Basically all you gotta do when you go to the airport is drop your bags off and go through the security line. This can save you a lot of hassle and it can make the difference between making your flight and missing your flight. Some airlines even assign seats or assign boarding times based on when you check in. So this can give you a big leg up if you do it about 24 hours in advance. Depending on your preference, you'll be able to print out your boarding pass right there at your home computer, or you can have it sent right to your phone if you're being eco-friendly and have them scan it right off that screen on your smartphone. Next up, preparing for your trip to the airport. Pack the luggage that you're going to check into the airport at least the day before. And most importantly, weigh your luggage to make sure it doesn't go over the 50 pound weight limit especially if you are paying for it online ahead of time. There is nothing more time consuming and embarrassing than having to fumble through underwear and clothes and shift things from one bag to the other just to make both your bags make that weight limit. Next, pack your carry-on items the night before. If you're using a purse or a backpack as your carry-on, go through it and make sure that you don't have any hidden items that are gonna throw up a red flag with security. You really don't want to have to waste time arguing with the TSA agent about that 
really expensive hand cream that you forgot was in your bag just to have them throw it away anyway. Make sure that you have everything you're going to need for your travel day. Kleenex, book, phone charger, etc. Forgetting something means you're going to be spending three times the price in the airport or going without. Next, pre-plan your wardrobe. I know it sounds silly, but why deal with the hassle of having to take off your belt at the airport if you can just wear something that doesn't need a belt? Also, make sure that you have comfortable shoes that you can take on and off very easily. I also try to wear a sweater that comes off and has pockets. That way, you know, you never know if it's going to be cold in the airport or on the plane. Also, I can preload my pockets with my wallet, my phone, different things that I know are going to have to go through the screening, like change. That way all I have to do is take off my sweater, put it on the belt. I don't have to worry about searching my pockets for all these things that are going to set off the alarms. Hopefully these tips will help you have a very stress-free day on your next trip to the airport. Things to do on a bus. Well, we haven't quite nailed down what our next book for the book club is going to be, seeing as how we just got back and we're just getting back in the swing of things. But I did want to share with you a book that I've been reading on our travel days and to and from our holiday vacation. And that is a wonderful pirate adventure by Michael Crichton. You remember him. Jurassic Park, called Pirate Latitudes. Well, in this book, he takes us back to the heyday of pirate times, when this was the new world still. And um, the book focuses on our hero, privateer Captain Charles Hunter, and he is working with the governor of Jamaica to raid a Spanish galleon and steal all the treasure there. Uh, it's a really, really good book. It's uh, kind of exciting. There's a lot of action in there, um, a lot of high sea chases, um, a lot of things you wouldn't expect to find in a pirate novel. Um, I was really, really happily surprised with it. Um, I'm about halfway through it myself. Um, there's even a little romance in there. It's a really fun book to read. I highly, highly recommend it. And I thought it would be perfect to talk about here on our episode about Tampa Bay because uh, pirate life is such a big part of Tampa Bay's history. Why don't you check it out? If you've already read it or plan on reading it, we would love to know what you think down in the comments. Adams, and I'd love if you take a backstage tour with me to meet some of the crew members here at the Adams Family. This is Suzanne, the production stage manager here at the Adams Family. So Suzanne, what do you do? I maintain the artistic quality of the production. I make sure everybody is where they're supposed to be and things happen safely and smoothly and we have a great show. That's amazing. What's something <laughs> fun about your job? <laughs> The people I get to work with. That's fun. Safe answer. Suzanne, have you ever called a queue too early that caused absolute chaos, several injured, and two people dead? No. Not me. Not me. That stinks. All right, well, thank you, Suzanne. Okay, you're welcome. This is Chloe Davis, our dance captain here at the Adams Family. So, Chloe, what do you do? Well, I'm the dance captain, so that means it's my job to maintain the original choreography as well as making sure that everyone's doing the best that they can and making sure the audience loves what we're doing. That's the fun part. But honestly, no, it's just my job to maintain the choreography that um, the original director and choreographer gave us, and in addition to making sure like we have understudies, making sure they're ready to go on. Also, if we have to make any amendments to the show, then it's my job to make sure that those amendments are acceptable, to talk with my stage director, to make sure that rehearsals go well and everyone feels good about the show. It's a great job, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. What got you into dance? Well, I was dancing since I was six, and I just want to be a superstar. Dance was my way to get in there. And what is the best part about your job? The best part of my job is that I get to work with amazing, amazing actors. They're great artists, and they're professional, and it just makes my job that much simpler. Well, thanks, Chloe. There you have it, folks. He's so cute. This is Nolan, the musical director here at the Adams Family. So, Nolan, what do you do? Uh, I am the conductor of the show, so I play the first keyboard part, and then I maintain the musicians here, and then I keep the actors going with my hands. Mm -hmm. And what is the hardest song to play on the show? The hardest song to play is Move Toward the Darkness at the very end of the show. It's a complicated keyboard part, and then sometimes I'm also conducting with my right hand while I play with my left. Oh, God. Who is the most high-maintenance singer in the show? 
I don't know if we have any high minded singers. We do have some actors whose voices keep changing. I have to lower the keys sometimes. Uh, okay. All right. So can you just stay right here for one second? Mm -hmm. Boom. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you for watching. Be sure to stop by again on Wednesday for Adam's Family Portraits, and then again Sunday for Gaming Out of Suitcases. If you like what you saw here today, please comment, subscribe, like, and share with your friends. And as always, if you know of some interesting places that we should go to in the cities we're about to visit, please let me know down in the comments. Later!